<coughs> Hi, this is Dolly Anderson. Today is Monday, October 11th. Welcome to the Morning News by with Dr. Serge Connum. As we all know, Dr. Khanna is a servant of the underserved and an advocate for the voice of the voiceless, especially for young adults. He founded the Post-Incarceration Juvenile Justice Reformation Act initiative, which in short we call the Returning Youth Initiative. This initiative assures youth that if released from incarceration have the ability to create a self-sustaining, productive life for themselves and reintegrate back into society. In this morning news bite, we try to highlight the extraordinary accomplishments of young adults around the nation to give inspiration to other young adults and enhance their talents. How are you doing this morning, Dr. Khanna? Good morning, Valley. Good morning, everyone. Those are listening to this. I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. Can't complain. Today is Monday. Actually, today is also a big day that the whole U.S. is celebrating. And if you know what that is, today is a Columbus Day. So Christopher Columbus, he came on this day. The whole US commemorates the landing of Christopher Columbus in Americas because, Valley, do you know when Christopher Columbus landed and where did he land it and which airport he landed? He landed in um, 1492 on October 12th in the Bahamas. Actually, he did not land through plane. He sailed the boat and came there, right? So he sailed the boat. And what did he do when he, when he reached Bahamas? He established Spain's first colony, like in America, with 39 of his men. So that means he came to U.S. with 39 of his men. But actually, when he started from Spain, he wanted to discover India. But the boat at those days, the navigation was not that great in 1492. You know, and he landed in Bahamas and he thought that was India. But then when he came out and he said, that's why even those Native Americans are called Indians. That's the reason why we name those Native Americans as Indians because he actually started discovering India, not US, but he ended up in US in Bahamas. But, the whole U.S. celebrates this day on the mon first, second Monday of October. So this year, it is in um, uh, 11th of October. And you rightly said that he came on October 12, 1492. And it's become a federal holiday. Officially, it did not become a federal holiday until 1937. For many, the holiday is a way of both honoring Columbus achievements and celebrating Italian American heritage. You know why? Because Christopher Columbus was Italian. There's a long story behind it, but I think everybody can nowadays, they can go online, they can Google and find out why he established the Spain's first colony and how come he was Italian. So that story, I'm keeping it for the young adults to discover it. But first Columbus Day celebration took place in 1792 when New York's Columbian order, known as Tamani Hall, an event to commemorate the historic landing 300th anniversary. But again, it did not go that much. In 1892, after 100 years, President Benjamin Harrison issued a proclamation encouraging Americans to mark the 400th anniversary of Columbus voyage. Still, it did not do much, but in 1937, 
President Franklin Roosevelt proclaimed Columbus Day a national holiday, largely as the result of intense lobbying by the Knights of Columbus, an influential Catholic fraternal organization. So since then, Columbus Day is observed on the second Monday of October. So most of the federal offices are closed, banks are closed, but private sectors remain uh, open and they do Columbus Day Parade and things like that. I don't know what they're gonna do this year because last year there was no Columbus Day Parade because of pandemic. Well, on top of that, as we normally do, we are bringing the news bite, encouraging news for young adults. So there are two teens we are going to talk about. Both of them are 14, two girls actually. They're from Montgomery, Alabama. And Valley, I heard that you were born in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So this is your birthplace. Two girls at the age of 14, they are running a nonprofit program called Women in Training with the help of their mother. They expanded that program. Wow, nice. Look at this cute face of these two. And one of their, uh, their names are Brooke and Brianna. And Brooke and Brianna, what they're doing, they are empowering the woman and advocacy for cultural equality. Many of the organization have honored these girls for what they're doing, including our cell phone carrier, T-Mobile. Both of the girls won the Gloria Baron Prize for young heroes and got a $5,000 each. And what they did with that uh, prize, they put, put that in the Omen in Training program, whatever they're running in. The fundraiser will be Omen in Training. And these are, actually these are, I heard that these are twins, the teen twin. Brooke and Brianna Bennett. I really admire this. I congratulate their mother and I congratulate and very much honored that community people from Montgomery, Alabama, they're supporting these young teens because women, empower, women empowerment is very important. So they opened this program two years ago. So I don't know whether they are 14 right now or 16, but they opened two years ago. And this is a excellent community service they're doing. This is why we bring this news bite here so that we can inspire young people to do something like that so that we can highlight to you. Definitely Brooke and Brinette, somebody from our initiative organization will reach out to you so that we can also get the inspiration and promote you so that you can inspire others. Well, Valley, thank you very much for bringing this wonderful news here. I'm sure you are excited to share because it is Columbus Day, some national program day also, some national food day is there too. Yeah, today is National Sausage Pizza Day. Wow. And yes. Uh, the longest sausage was measured to be nearly 39 miles long, which I cannot <laughs> comprehend. And the risk of esophageal cancer is reduced significantly if pizza is consumed at least once a week. So that was something I learned and that everybody else should know. <laughs> and you know what? The pizza industry brings more than $30 billion a day, a, sorry, a year. A year, yes. It's a huge. But this sausage, which you said, 38.99 miles long, which is approximately 39 miles long. I don't know if one person can eat it. It's a long sausage. <laughs> long sausage. It might take him the whole year to eat the 39 mile long sausage. And be so, sick. you know, so I'll, I'll, you know, but that's good. That's good. So I think it's being a holiday, especially the federal workers and the bank workers. 
since this is a holiday, they can order pizza and they can eat pizza too. And they can add value to this 20, uh, no, $30 billion industry. Again, thank you very much, uh, Valley, for bringing this wonderful show on every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I again, thanks all the young adults and let's also commemorate today the most valuable day, Columbus Day, because without Columbus, I don't think we would have known what America was. So even though it was a mistake, but it came to be America, the great country and the country of freedom and country for brave. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Connor, for joining me today. For those who wish to know more about this initiative, please visit the website returningyouth.com. We bring Sunrise to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, shortly after 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube at Returning Youth or Kana for Youth. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you on Wednesday. God bless.